Well, welcome to Proven's Garage. Today, I'm finally starting on a project that I've been wanting to do for a while. Today, I'm starting my Sleeper S10 build. Now, I wasn't necessarily gonna do an S10 the whole time. It was just gonna be something that kinda looked like a piece of shit <laughs> that I'm gonna put an LS motor in with the turbo and uh, just surprise people on the street. I'll probably also go to the drag strip. So, the reason I got this truck being as immaculate as it is, is because I got a smoking deal on it. I got the truck and I got a Gen 3 4.8 liter LS motor and a 4L80 transmission, which is the beefcake of most transmissions that come on LS motors. You can get a 6L80 on some of them, but if you have to choose between a 4L60 and a 4L80, eh, I'd go with the 80. 60s are known to be grenades. But I got this whole thing, 1500 bucks. So I couldn't pass it up. All right, so I got the little 2.2 in the truck running and driving so I can move it around as I'm working on this. All it really needed was an oil pan gasket and <laughs> it's kind of a turd. Uh, but it runs and it drives, so I'm gonna pull that out and try to sell the motor. If I can't sell it, I'll just build a cart around it or something. Anyway, I started tearing into the motor a little bit. So the 4.8 is actually in really good shape. Uh, the cylinders still have cross hatching in them, which is awesome. I had no idea how many miles were on this motor, so it was kind of a gamble, but it's working out pretty nicely for me. Um, the cylinder heads, besides being filthy on the outside, are beautiful on the inside. So this motor was a real score. So I plan to do a lot of things with this motor. I'm going to do a cam, I'm going to do head studs, I got a new oil pump for it, uh, and I want to do rods and pistons because these Gen 3 motors have the weaker rods, and piston ring lands tend to be a failure point when you start running boost. But I had to tear into the motor first so I could measure the cylinder walls and make sure everything was still within spec for stock. So I still have to do that. But I also have a 5.3. And this is going to be a street strip drag racing truck, but mostly I want to street drive it. And the 5.3 will provide more bottom end torque, so it'll be better drivability on the street. So this 5.3 I got for a couple hundred bucks pulled the oil pan off and it was just sludge. I mean, there was some oil in there, but you could tell it hadn't been changed in probably 30,000 miles. So what I can do though, is if this crank is still good, as long as the bearings aren't smoked and everything still looks good, I can put this crank in the 4.8 and then we have a 5.3 with a really nice block, really nice heads, should be good to go. So I'm gonna take a look at these bearings. I'm gonna pull these caps off if it looks good, we might go that route. If it looks like crap, and I just feel sketchy about it, I can always stick with the 4.8 and it'll still work fine. Looks like I'm sticking with the 4.8. Let's take a look at this thing. So, at first glance, it doesn't seem that bad. 
You can definitely see some scoring. The center one has the most. But if you look at all the caps on the rods and the main bearings, everything is scored up pretty good. There's been some junk that's flowed through this oil and it's probably because it wasn't changed. I don't know, ever? Maybe it had an oil leak and they just thought that topping it off every couple of weeks was fine and you never need to change your oil. But I have a really, really good feeling that this motor, the 4.8, is going to look great. Everything has looked really good so far. I think I'm just going to keep this motor as a spare. At least the block is good. Maybe I could just, you know, put it in something and, and not worry about blowing it up. It probably won't have great oil pressure with the way all of these bearing surfaces look. So I'm not going to use that. And I don't feel like buying a new crank. So 4.8, you know, four point great. But I think that this and the transmission in the truck for 1500 bucks was still a great deal. You could say it was a no-brainer. Huh? Definitely got a lot of cleaning to do, but as you can see, a little bit of elbow grease can go a long way from that to that. I think she's gonna shine up pretty nice. These rockers and everything in this head look real nice already, but I still am gonna clean them up a little bit. The other head, they look like they got a little bit of baked on oil. Still in really nice shape, but we're gonna take them and send them through the ultrasonic cleaner. Dear Tay. All right, so now I'm gonna pull off the harmonic balancer, pull off the front cam cover, I'm gonna take the oil pan off, and I'm gonna pull off the back cover and then we can pull out the pistons. I'm gonna take out the lifters because I'm putting in new lifter trays and LS7 lifters. And I'm also getting a new oil pan, so I don't even need to clean that one, which is great because I got enough stuff to clean. some crap in there. Whatever, I think it's gonna be alright. It's cleaned up pretty nice. If I just do a little bit more by hand, yeah, it's all coming right off. Look at that. Awesome. Gotta love an ultrasound cleaner. Let's get the balancer off. Just use the old Senzol. And then what I like to do is you find a bolt that fits inside the pulley. Let me show you. So you can see there's the end of the crank, and then this outer ring is part of the pulley itself. And the head of this fits right in there. So now I can get my puller, end of my puller right on here. And if you look at the back side, there's these little flats. So I just use a three-jaw puller. It's worked every other time. Let's see if it works again. So normally with the back cover, I would take this off before I put it on the engine stand, but sometimes I'm an idiot, and I didn't. So this is going to be a lot of fun reaching back here to get all these little 10 mils, so I'll just get back to when I'm done. Alright, so now we're going to take out lifter trays and lifters. Um, I'm not going to reuse these, but I'm going to save them because they're probably just fine. I mean, we'll find out in a second, but good chance they're okay. Yeah, these are definitely just fine. Cool, I'm gonna pull the rest.
pan looks like it's in pretty good shape. I mean, we're not gonna reuse it, but that's a good sign that this thing was running good. It was well lubricated. That means the motor's generally in pretty good shape. So one of the really cool things about these LS motors and why they can hold so much power is because it's not only a four bolt main cap for each of your bearing journals, it's six bolt because it has one in each side. So that's why you can make over a thousand horsepower on the stock bottom end. Um, so now these, you can see they're actually numbered, which is also super helpful. And they're all facing the same direction. If you see the little tab there, the front four face towards the back of the motor and then the back one faces forward. Pretty easy. So I'm gonna get these caps off. Sometimes they take a little persuasion. I just use a rubber mallet, kind of knock it back and forth, and then they come off. We can take a look at the bearings and then this thing's ready to hot tank. Now the crank bearings look pretty good. And I'm really tempted just to reuse them because these fit really well with the crank that's in it. Well, I might just go ahead and replace them anyway while I'm in here. Well, I dropped the block off at the machine shop and I might have splurged on a few things I wasn't really gonna do. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but I'm gonna do uh, hot tanking of the engine block. I'm gonna have them balance the crank and the rods and the pistons all together. So it'll run really smooth, which is, I think, a good idea. And then I'm gonna have them do a uh, clean for assembly and polish the crank up a little bit. Didn't really need it that much, but why not? So in the meantime, I got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I'm getting pretty excited. I got a lot of awesome parts here. Uh, we'll go over all this stuff in the next episode. Um, and I got a couple boxes over here and this is a box of crap we're not gonna keep. Definitely not going back on the engine. And then some stuff we are gonna reuse, like the starter and the coils, uh, the valley cover, you know, just a couple things. Um, next thing I gotta do really though is uh, start working on the heads. I gotta get these cleaned up. I'm gonna clean all the valves and I'm gonna lap them. I'm gonna get the deck really clean. Uh, I'm gonna do dual valve springs on the other side. And then I also have to do a trunnion upgrade on the rocker arms. But for now, I think we're gonna wrap it up. So. I'm going to get working on some other stuff, recording some more video, but I hope you guys join us next time because this is about to get pretty cool. Thanks for watching Probins Garage. Huh?